Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. We are sharing some of our best tips and tricks with you today. We don't do a lot of these and we're starting to get more and more into it. I know you've seen a million vlogs, but this time we are sharing our advice from the heart, from the soul. Hope you learned a couple things. Feel free to use the advice if you wish and you don't have to if you don't want to. You may already know some of this and that's fine. So, starting off, Prep your phone before you go. Download all the applicable apps that you wanna have on your journey. Get music on your phone, everything that you wanna have. If you're the kind of person that watches movies or reads books on your phone, get those. There's nothing worse than getting to the airport and being like, oh, I wish I had this prepped and I forgot to. Language translators, some kind of navigation app. Maps.me is actually a really solid app to have for when you are traveling and you don't have access to Wi-Fi or you don't have any data. You can download the map of the region before you go and then you can have it while you're offline, it's very helpful. My personal piece of advice, I like to Google different common phrases or sentences in the language that they speak in the country that I'm going to. And that way, while I'm on the flight there, I can go through them. And it's literally just like going through photos that have you know 10 to 15 different phrases on it that you can just learn, start practicing, and you get by the time that you're there. Invest in some noise canceling headphones. Let's face it, when we're traveling, a lot of the times we would like to be relaxing to our own music, but sometimes things around us are so loud that they get into our head and ruin our zen. So if you invest in a nice good pair of noise canceling headphones, this just makes your trip much more peaceful. I'm so zen, I can't hear the roar of the engine of the plane. I'm so zen, I can't hear this f***ing baby to my left. I'm so zen, I can't hear where I'm supposed to get off and now I'm in another f***ing country. <laughs> get a SIM card for your phone when you get to the country. Okay, this one for me is one of the most underrated tips and I'm still surprised I see people not getting SIM cards for their phones when they're traveling. The first couple of trips I did by myself, I didn't get a SIM card, but I realized how reliant I was on translator apps, WhatsApp for contacting my friends, and just using the internet overall to discover the country. But then I found myself double backing and having to slow down and hit up places that had Wi-Fi and I just realized how inconvenient that could be. Eventually, my friends when I was in Thailand showed me that they had SIM cards for their phones at the fraction of the price that we have in Canada for internet. A quick search in Google, I could find the SIM card spots that were local to the country I was in. It was literally a five minute process to get a SIM card into my phone. That way, I had internet whenever I needed it. One pro tip I have for you guys when trying to figure out if SIM cards fit your budget, how they work in the country, or where to find them, is using the website Too Many Adapters. This site shows you basically all the countries in the world that have have SIM cards that are readily available to use for your phone. This is not a sponsored ad or anything, I just find their website's really awesome to use when you're trying to figure out SIM cards for your phone. So a couple things to know before getting a SIM card. One, your phone must be unlocked. The second thing you have to know is you may need to bring your passport to some locations when you buy your SIM card because you have to get it registered. It's not sketchy, just bring a photocopy and just show them and then you should be good to go with internet throughout the country. Bring a small bag that you designate as a holder for your cables and batteries. When you're traveling, most likely you're gonna run into an issue where you're losing your cables or misplacing your batteries. What I do is I bring a little bag like this, which I designate as my cable, battery, or small stuff bag. It's got all my cables in here, never gets lost and it just goes into my bag at the end of the travel day and I got peace of mind knowing that this bag holds everything that I need to keep my electronics going. Research tipping culture. This is definitely a common mistake a lot of travelers do and admittedly I've done a lot myself. Every new foreign country I go to, I like to research the local customs, learn the language so I don't stick out like a sore thumb like a tourist. But I always seem to forget to know what the tipping culture is in the country that I'm visiting. So you have a great meal, you receive awesome service, and in the end you leave a bunch of money on the table and you find out you're in some place like Japan where they don't accept tips and they just say, what is that? And they don't even know what to do with it. And they're just like, you don't, we don't do that here. But at the end of the day conversely and you're from a country that doesn't generally tip and you come to say Canada or the States or some other country that has maybe a 10 to 15 percent tipping culture it's just kind of unfair to the server I've been a bartender to server on the other side of that people from another country come in and they don't end up tipping you give them this great service it does happen it gets frustrating but it happens a lot just do a little Google before you go on your trip so you know what their tipping culture is so everybody gets what they deserve it's that simple guys 
bring a portable charger with you. Now, this is pretty much a given in our, you know, our new technologically advanced world when you're gonna be outside and traveling a lot, your battery on your phone is gonna run out. So you wanna have a secondary backup source, right? Bring a external battery charger. Usually these things cost about maybe 30 bucks, 40 bucks, and these will give you about six more times the battery life than your normal phone. And what's great about this is that you can have two little outputs here so you can share the power with a friend. This is the easiest way to make friends on a trip. Whip it out and people are like, is that a charger? And you'll be like, totally dude, just plug it in and have some of my power. And here's another bonus tip. What you can get is a multi-plug power charger and instead of two, now you can charge four phones at once. Your friends are gonna love you for it. If you wanna know more about the portable chargers that we use, we've left the link in the description below. So click and bye. <laughs> Okay, this is a long one guys, a long title. Be flexible with your travel dates and use at least three search engines for searching flights in incognito mode. That was long, man. Well, f it. You want me to shorten it? Nope. First part of this is you gotta be flexible with your travel dates if you wanna save a lot of money. If you're planning your trip way in advance, if you can just stretch out when the departure date and when you're coming back to within five days, give or take, you will and can save up to five to $300 depending on where you're going. This happens every single time for me when I'm flying internationally. You'll be surprised how much the flight prices change based on the day of the week that you book and you're returning. The second part to this is using incognito mode when you are searching for your flights. Flight websites use something called cookies to track the flights that you're trying to book and will up the prices on you if you search it a couple times, multiple times, because that's the way they do things. They're a little sneaky like that. To beat that, clear your cookies or search all your flights in incognito mode. I use at least three search engines when I'm booking my flights. Matrix ITA software, Google Flights, and Kayak.com. There are many more, but these are the ones that have time and time again served me very well and saved me so much more money. The reason why I use at least three different search engines is you wanna cross-reference the prices and the dates that you are booking just to make sure that you have the best price. Keep your passport safe. Don't have it on you. When you get to your location, put it in a safe plot or maybe even the safe box in your hotel room if you have one, but don't bring it out with you. A lot of places will ask for your passport if you wanna rent a motorcycle or a scooter or a car or even checking into a hotel, they'll wanna take it. They don't need to take it. You don't need to give it to them. They can take photocopies of it or you can have photocopies prepared already to give to them. Don't trust your passport with anybody else. Only use it when necessary for photocopying purposes. Load your Skype account with money so you can make international calls. This is something that really helped me when I was in Bali last year because bank account got frozen and I couldn't take any money out. So instead of wanting to borrow money from Parker and Josh, who generally don't like lending me money, I had to call them somehow, but I couldn't do it with the SIM card I had. The best way I found out by just a quick Google search was using Skype. And just through your credit card, you add a couple dollars and you can make international phone calls to anywhere in the world and it's really cheap. It really saved my ass because you can't use use WhatsApp to phone landlines or businesses. It's a quick tip you don't have to do, but it's really good for emergency situations. Recommend it for anyone and it doesn't cost that much money. Label your stuff. Now, when you're traveling in a big group, such as High Life, with tons of cables, tons of batteries, tons of cameras, tons of lenses, most likely you're gonna get your stuff mixed up. The best way to alleviate all this is to invest in a label maker. Last year in Bali, I came <laughs> with this little device and I printed out labels for everybody's stuff. For example, this is my portable charger. This is Justice's portable charger. This is Parker's Sony memory card. This is super geeky and super nerdy to bring in such a device on a trip. Who's gonna bring that big of a label maker? I, th this is what I did though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Josh's label maker is the greatest thing that ever has happened to me on travels. Oh, look at that, rush one. Definitely invest in one of these. You know what? I'm actually gonna label something really quickly here. Watch this, printing action. Use the scissors here. You cut off the edges, you gotta peel it off. Very easy process if you have fingers. Very easy to read. Ta-da! Now his little light is labeled. Pack a personal medical kit. I don't leave for any travel without one. I always have it in my bag, and for the most part, I don't even touch it. And that's a good thing. Hopefully you won't ever have to touch yours either. But I know from experience that it is a very good thing to have access to Band-Aids, gauze, 
painkillers than it is to try to find a pharmacy while your foot is bleeding all over the bathroom floor and you are trying to brush the sand out with a toothbrush. Did this happen in something? Bali. Like the last day? Mm-hmm. Can I see your foot? <laughs> that is ironic, my friend. Ironic that you... <laughs> That's disgusting. Holy shit. I almost took the skin off. Don't. I'm not gonna. Book a hotel with a free airport shuttle for your long overnight layovers. All right, guys, this is one of my favorite points because I kind of came up with it on myself. I'm sure other people have done it before, but no one taught me this one, so I'm kind of proud about it. <laughs> Even before your flight, go to one of the booking websites that you can get cheap hotels for. Click one of the permissives that say free airport shuttle. Then when you get to the airport and you arrive, call the hotel and they'll come pick you up. It's free of charge. And then you have access to a bedroom, a shower, and you can just change if you want to. And it's just so much better than sleeping in a stinky airport floor for 12 hours hours straight. It's just a pain in the ass. I've done it a couple times, but I can tell you spending the extra 50 to $70 is so much more worth it by using this little trick. And when you're done showering, when you've had your nap, they drive you back to the airport for free just in time for your flight. Give it one shot on your next overnight layover that's super long and I guarantee you'll never sleep on another airport floor again. Communal wallet. This is one that probably you haven't heard of before. It's for traveling with friends. And this is actually a reoccurring issue that we had on the beginning of our big high on life travels. We would go to pay for something like a taxi ride and nobody would have money to contribute so that we could all cover the cost and pay the same amount. Generally it was one person paying way more than everybody else because we all had big bills or small coins and that could never get the job done. So after a while of like day three being like, okay, I don't remember how much you paid versus how much I've paid anymore we found a solution, the communal wallet. So we would go to an ATM, we would all take out whatever money we wanted to take out, and then we would contribute the same amount to one person who had the designated communal wallet. In our case, that was me. I also realized that you can't just give that to anybody. This has to be an organized person. The communal wallet really made things a lot easier and simpler for us, especially in terms of figuring out who owes what. It's a good technique. Give it a try. Put a colorful ribbon on your bag to quickly identify it. The thing is, a lot of people have the same kind of colored bags. So if you're showing up to the carousel with a black colored bag and there may be 300 people with the same kind of colored bag, it's gonna get lost really easily. To alleviate that, put a colored ribbon or something to quickly identify your bag so that when you see it, you're like, yeah, that's my bag. Or you could put stickers on it. You could make it look like this. This is mine. Easily identifiable, never stolen because it's weird. Always bring a sombrero on a plane. <laughs> now this one seems like an easy one. This is the best travel tip I have. When you bring a sombrero on a plane, everyone loves it. The flight attendants love it when they're pushing the cart down the alleyway and it bumps your head. Every yeah, I'm back in it, baby. There was one tip that we forgot to mention. What I want to tell you is that when you get off of a plane and you are at your destination, you are probably going to be looking for transportation. There will be people everywhere trying to flag you down, telling you to use their cab service or their taxi or whatever. There. 10 seconds of being here, we were surrounded by cab drivers. They're going to charge more than they should because they can. Because A, it's convenient and it's right there out of the airport. And B, you as a foreigner or a tourist probably don't know any better. Do your research beforehand. Have a couple of look through some, some forums or some blogs or things that people have written online of what it should cost to go from point A to point B at your specific destination. And then you can have that to compare so that you can use it as a bar bargaining tool when you get somewhere. Don't ever just take the first price offered to you. It's never a good deal and it's never a good idea. Point of this is do some research and no, don't take the first price because it's going to be more than you need to pay. So we don't do a lot of these kind of videos very often, but if you liked it and if you want more of it, then let us know in the comments. Tell us, talk to us. We're gonna read your comments. We'll probably respond to most of them. Leave a heartfelt message, leave some constructive criticism. We didn't get all the hacks out there. There are probably some cool ones that we missed that you might know of. We wanna hear about it, share it with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification button in the corner so that you know when we post a video, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you on the next one. Leave a comment. And action. <laughs>